Hey there YouTube, it's uh, Helical4 here. Uh, today is September 24th, 2009, and um, exactly two months uh, today, on November 24th, um, uh, Ray Comfort will be releasing his introduction, or basically having them distributed in, in Canada, in uh, various universities across Canada. Um, this is an unofficial date, um, but it's important to me because um, I live in Canada and I work, my, my, the lab that I work in is at a Canadian university, so um, I'm thinking I might uh, see some of his people at my, at my, camp, at, uh, my campus one day, so um, interesting um, thing kind of uh, happened here. Um, in my attempts to kind of research, here I'm just going to move this over. Um, in my attempts to uh, find more about this uh, introduction that Ray Comfort's uh, written, um, I actually came across what I think is actually the real uh, manuscript, but it's not in the, the uh, book-bound form, it's actually in a PDF form. And uh, I just kind of printed it out. It's about 54 pages long, and I've just kind of printed two pages on a page, front and back, and um, I'm not really sure if I found the real thing here, but it looks pretty legit um, based on the uh, video um, talking about the release of this book and some of the uh, uh, things that they were um, going to talk about in the book seem to be in here, so I think this is the real thing. Um, and since I, I have it here, I just wanted to, to go ahead and comment on uh, a few things that I read about it, uh, in it. <clears throat> um, first of all, you can see there's a cover page that says The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. And then there's, on the next page, page two, there's the copyright information. And um, if this is the introduction written by Ray Comfort, there is no mention of his name on this copyright page. Um, next is the table of contents. You probably can't read it, but um, I'll give you the link where I found this. You can look at it yourself. Um, this is uh, the table of contents. The first item is the special introduction. I guess that's uh, Ray Comfort's um, special introduction. Um, and the uh, chapter headlines for chapter one uh, through to uh, chapter eight are all um, titles from uh, <clears throat> Charles Darwin's book, uh, Origin of Species. Here's my copy of it here. And I've actually gone and just double checked looking at his table of contents. And um, he actually has uh, Ray Comfort's um, manuscript here, if you want to call it that, has eight chapters. And there's actually 14 chapters in uh, Charles Char Darwin's book. So I don't really know if um, he did that on purpose or, or what. Oh, actually, you know what? There's actually nine chapters, but I mean, there's 14, so he's missing some. <clears throat> and then it goes straight, there, there's a little picture of Darwin, and then it just goes straight into the, sorry, the special introduction. And I made some notes here. Um, the first four pages kind of just go into Darwin's history. And then pages uh, four <clears throat> to seven just kind of uh, have a timeline, just uh, has years highlighting various uh, events um, of his life. And then on ch uh, page nine, um, Ray Comfort starts talking about the, um, the DNA code and uh, DNA similarities. Um, so he starts off by um, comparing the uh, DNA code, or what I usually refer to as the genomic sequence, um, as he compares it to a book. And like a book, he argues that you can't really get a um, readable book by just putting together a random, random jumble of letters and um, having it 
make a book that makes readable sense. And he makes a comparison to the DNA sequence where you can't just have a random sequence of nucleotides and um, have it create the actual genome for a working living organism. Um, one thing that is kind of impressive is that he did a lot of the stuff when he talks about DNA is true, but I mean, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he just copied and pasted it. Um, there's a lot of websites out there that all say the same thing about DNA. It's the basics of DNA are you'll you'll find them anywhere. You you Google search DNA, and uh, you'll you'll read the same thing over and over again. So, and then he illustrates the sheer vastness of information that's stored in the DNA sequence of an individual or any individual organism and he says that well I guess he's just comparing to our DNA where he says that the amount of information stored is equivalent to a thousand books and a person typing at 60 words per minute will take 50 years to type out the entire human genome sequence. Um, he also talks about how uh, there are like a hundred trillion cells in your body and if you took all the DNA from all your cells and connected them end to end that it would um, reach from here to the sun and back 60 times and that distance is about 90 trillion miles. I mean you hear a lot of these things and you know, when you talk about the awesomeness of DNA that makes up living things. Um, I guess he's just saying that the information is just so vast that it just couldn't have come into being just from random chance is, is basically what the argument that he's trying to make. Um, now, wouldn't you know, um, there's a lot of quote mining in this uh, uh, in this introduction. <laughs> um, one uh, person is a famous scientist, uh, Francis Collins, the head of the um, publicly funded uh, uh, branch of the Human Genome Project. Um, he also quotes Anthony F uh, Flew, which is another common one in this uh, discussion. Um, <clears throat> then he talks about uh, DNA similarities, um, where a lot of the uh, talk about um, DNA sim sim similarities between organisms is usually talked about between uh, chimps and humans. Um, I kind of talked about this before in one of my previous videos of um, how, and he, this is what he write, writes down and how it's um, that the 98 to 99 percent identical between humans and chimps. And um, he also kind of mentioned here that, that it's identical depending on what was counted. So I've kind of heard of this discussion before um, from uh, chatting with various people um, on different uh, chat groups and on the uh, YouTube um, where they kind of talk about where usually when they talk about these sequence comparisons where they just take a small section of the genome and they compare it to that corresponding sequence in a different organism and they pop out a number like 98 percent identical and they haven't really looked at the entire genome and this is usually true for a lot of cases because a lot of that junk DNA that you hear people talk about, um, there isn't a lot of match per se um, because a lot of there's a lot of repeats which make it very difficult to to do these alignments on. So usually they just look at uh, sense sequence like gene sequences and that sort of thing.